I'm Joe James. In this video, we're going to learn how to pixelate an image using the Java Buffered Image Library. So we've made a couple of previous videos in this series. This is the third one. Uh, and I'm going to continue on with other image filters. So um, keep tuning in if you want to learn more about how to process and, uh, filter images. And uh, hopefully we'll be getting into some machine learning stuff soon. So I'm kind of setting some groundwork for some machine learning algorithms as we get into that. Uh, namely, like text recognition and things like uh, picking out features and characteristics uh, from an image. So for now, what we're going to do is pixelate an image. What does that mean, pixelate? Well, here's our original image, a close-up of a small piece of it. And you can see it's fairly crisp resolution. But when we pixelate it, do a 2 by 2 pixelation, you can see that what we do is we, we reduce the resolution of the image. And 3x3 three three pixel solution further reduces the resolution of the image. So what we're doing is replacing a set of 2x2, two two, which is 4 pixels, with, with uh, all the same color. Or in this case, 3x3, three three, a square, with all the same color. So how do we, um, how do, we do that? So if, if our original is, if we're doing 2x2 two two pixelation and we have 4 pixels, we take the average, we calculate the average of those four pixels, the grayscale value of it. Keep in mind, grayscale is 0 to 255. So we're just going to add up the grayscale value of each of these four pixels, take the average and set all four of them equal to the same value. And then we can do 3 by 3 or n by n pixelation exactly the same way, right, where we, we take the average of nine pixels, the whole three by three block, we, we sum up the grayscale value of those nine pixels, and then we set all nine pixels equal to the same value. So that, that pixelates the image. And um, for implementation, we're going to use nested for loops, and it sounds a little crazy, but actually four nested for loops. And we're going to have an outer set of loops, x and y, that iterate through the rows and columns of the image, but in jumps of, let's say, two or three pixels at a time. So here we can see we have an n of three, right? Zero, one, and two. These, these red is going to be the inner loop, a and b, where we iterate through. Um, now you saw in this previous image, we're doing three by three pixelation. This would be an example of 3x3 three three pixelation for an image that has uh, 9 vertical picture, pixels by 12 horizontal pixels. So what we're going to do is set this whole large box equal to the same um, grayscale value. So we're going to iterate through A from 0 to 2 and B from 0 to 2, calculate the sum and then calculate the average of those 9 pixels, and then set all 9 of them equal to the same value and then advance x one step and do exactly the same thing for this box, advance x one more step and do the same thing for this box, and then one more step, and then we'll jump down to the y. So x and y is going to be our counter for the large squares, while a and b is our counter for these little squares inside of the large boxes that we're going to, with our pixelation squares. So let's look at the code and see how we actually implement that code is on my GitHub site at the link below in the comments. So please download the code, run it, try it out, use it on your own images so that you can actually learn how it works, and tweak the code, make some adjustments to it. This is the same code that we've been using for the previous two videos, so I'm not going to walk through our first couple of image filters that we did. The first video we did was just how to load and display an image in a JPanel pop-up, and the second one was converting it to grayscale. This third video is on pixelation of a grayscale image, and we're going to write in this video two different functions to pixelate an image. The first one will be just a 2x2 two two pixelation, and then the second function will be in by in pixelation, so that you can pixelate to uh, 3 or 4 by 4 uh, square pixels if you want. So we're building on code that we used for previous videos, and all the code is downloadable. So the first thing we want to do is make a function call to the pixelate function. We've loaded an image, and we've converted to grayscale. And now we have a grayscale image, so we can display that image. 
Um, and when I run this, you'll see it in a second. So the next thing we're going to do is call our pixelate function on that image. We're going to pass in an image and we're going to get back an image. This is a buffered image. And in the next function, I'll, I'll show you uh, how to do pixelate 2, where we're going to pass in another parameter, 3, which, which will be in, right? The number of pixels that we want to pixelate, 3 by 3. But in this one, it's just going to use a default of 2. So pixelate function. Uh, now we need to write the pixelate function and see how that actually works. We'll display the image after we call the pixelate function so we can see how that works. So let's set up a function header here. Apply 2x2 two two pixelation to a grayscale image. It's important that we're passing in a grayscale image because uh, we're, this function is not going to be able to handle a color image. So again, we're going to pass in a buffered image, and we'll just call it IMG, similar to our other functions, as you can see. And we'll return a buffered image as well. So the first thing we're going to do, similar to our, the other, the grayscale function that we wrote in a previous video, we're going to start by creating a new object, uh, a buffered image object, which will be our pixelated image. And then we're going to return that pixelated image after we're done doing some stuff in here. And for our new pixelated image, of course, we're going to set the width and the height equal to exactly the same as the image that we pass in. And we're going to set the color to the grayscale. Then we're going to set up a couple variables. We're going to have um, pix and p, both of which are equal to zero to start out. Now we have a nested for loop. Now in the two by two, since we're fixed at just two by two pixels, it's going to be easiest to just have uh, two nested for loops. So we have uh, an iterate through the y and iterate through the x function. And you'll see how we do this inside here. As I explained in the intro, you're going to see um, we basically iterate through the y's in jumps of two. So we're incrementing y by two each time. We're incrementing x by two each time. And we start from y equals 0, we go, go to height minus 2, and width minus 2 for x. So we have to get the grayscale value for that pixel. Okay, so when we looked at this image, so we're going to get all four of these pixels and add them up, and then divide by 4, and then set all four. So back to the code, we iterate through the uh, y and x, we get the pixel value for x comma y, x plus 1 comma y, x comma y plus 1, and x plus 1, y plus 1. So we're getting a, a square of 4 pixels, and then we're dividing by 4. So now pix is equal to the average grayscale value of those 4 pixels in a square. Now we need to pack all four colors data back into P because that's how um, the grayscale color library works in buffered image. So we have, this is blue, green, and red. We want to set them all equal to the same. So we're just setting PIX, PIX shift 8, PIX shift 16, and then that's the opacity value, 255. So we set p equal to um, basically this divide by 4 function. And then we're going to set the pixel values for each one of those four pixels. So we'll start out with x comma y, and we'll set that equal to p. And then we'll do it for the other three as well. x plus 1, y, x comma y plus 1, x plus 1, y plus 1. And we're setting the um, grayscale value equal to p for each of those four pixels in the image. Now, like I said, we're going to iterate through basically all, all the pixels in the image, but in chunks of four at a time, two by two blocks. So that is our pixelate image function. We've basically iterated through all of the pixels, calculated the average, and then set that in blocks of four, set that average pixel value so let's run this and see if it works.
And it's going to be a little bit hard to tell, but you can see that uh, the right image is pixelated. This is 2x2 two two pixelation. This one is definitely crisper, and this one has a reduction of resolution. Okay, so let's take a look at the 3x3 three three pixelation, or n by n pixelation. We're going to call this pixelate2. We'll make it a separate function. Hide this one, and let's set up a uh, function header for our n by n pixelation. And for our test case, we're just going to pass in a 3 for n, but it could theoretically be any number. We should probably put a safety check just to make sure that n is an integer and it's uh, smaller than the size of the image. Uh, but anyway. So again, we're passing in a buffered image called IMG. We're returning a buffered image. And n is our um, number of pixels uh, in the x and y. It's going to be square pixelation box. And so the first thing we're going to do is create a new buffered image object. We'll call it pixeled image, pix image. And it's going to be set equal to the width and height, exactly the same as the image that we passed in. And we're going to use the grayscale color library. And then we're going to return pix image, because when we're done, we're going to have set all the pixels in this image. We're going to use two variables again, similar to the previous function, pix and p, set both of them equal to zero initially. And then we're going to have nested for loops. So we need to iterate through each of the big boxes, the x and y big boxes. Remember this. We're going to iterate through x and y, these big boxes first. So that's going to be an outer set of for loops. And then we're going to have an inner set of for loops to iterate through A and B. So here's our inner for loops. Now the thing is we're going to have to iterate through A and B twice. Once to calculate the average pixel value of the grayscale value of, the, of that, uh, that box, all of the pixels in that box. So in this case, 9, right? If n is equal to 3, it's 3 by 3, so there are 9, nine pixels. We want to calculate the average of those nine pixels and then iterate through them again to go back and set all of those nine. So we'll, we'll calculate um, the average by saying pix plus equals get RGB uh, x plus a, y plus b. Right? That way we can, as we iterate through um, a and b, we can, we can get the average or actually this is just going to take the sum and then we need to divide by n by n, right? By n squared to get the average after we're done with this for loop. So we'll go through the nested for loops for a and b. So we, we grab the pixel value, the grayscale pixel value of each cell. And then when we're done, we'll have the sum and we divide that sum by 3 squared or 9, right? Because there's nine, 9 cells. So PIX is now our average cell weight, or the average color, for that block of nine, 9 cells. Now we need to iterate through A and B a second time to go back in and set them all. So now we're, this time, the first time through A and B, we did get RGB. The second time we're going to set RGB. So we do exactly the same loop again. But now we're going to do set RGB. So we packed the color values back into P exactly as we did in the previous function, right, for R, G, B, and the opacity value, or the alpha value. And finally, we set picks back to zero to end this um, outer for loop. And when we're all done with that, we'll comment out the pixelate function call, and we'll uncomment the pixelate2 function call. So now if we save this, we should be able to run that and see what happens. Let's compile it. Okay, this is the pixelated image, and this is the original image. So now you can see, yeah, much heavier pixelation here. So that's pixelation. Uh, in the next video, we're probably going to do uh, image resizing. So that's going to be a pretty useful one. 
I hope this video was helpful for you. If so, please click like and thumbs up on my videos and please keep watching. We're going to get into more advanced stuff in image processing, uh, image filters, and machine learning. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.